Hey my chess friends, I warmly welcome you to this chess video and I have a very interesting idea to share with you. The, in the martial arts, there is a word for unbalancing one's opponent called kushuki. And essentially that's what it means. It means to use an opponent's force against them to destroy their balance. And it's especially pronounced in martial arts like Judo and Aikido. And the Aikido master, what he will do is he welcomes his opponent's attack. He welcomes the aggression. And he simply uses the inertia and force of his opponent to unbalance him. And the exact same principle can be applied in chess. We welcome our opponent's aggression and we find ways of using that aggression against them to break their balance. And I have a very, very interesting example of this taken from a very recent game. It was played on the 26th of this month in the Quetter Masters Open. And with the white pieces is Nardic. Arkadij Nadic, German Super Grandmaster, with a rating of over 2700. And with the black pieces is our hero in this episode here. Rajpara Ankit from India. I'm not going to go through the whole game, I'm just going to get to the, the point that illustrates what we are in fact discussing. How to use an opponent's force and inertia to unbalance them. Check this out, it begins e4, c6, d4, d5. We go into the advanced variation of the Karo Khan. Bishop f5, knight f3, e6. Bishop e2, knight to e7. Castles. Bishop drops back. Knight comes to d2, knight f5. c4 attacking the head of the pawn chain, bishop to e7 develops, and here Nadic goes in for this very aggressive move, g4. And it's been played before by other aggressive chess players like Alexei Sherov. Now Rajpara could simply play a move like knight to h4, and after knight takes, bishop takes. Let's say f4 and f5. He's okay, he's fine. But here he goes in for a very, very interesting idea. Instead, he retreats away from the aggression. Plays knight to h6, attacking the pawn. After h3, he then undevelops the knight to g8. And he's going to use the advanced position of these pawns here against the aggressor. And he does so by playing the move h5. Knight comes to g2, takes and takes. Now I'm not going to go into the entire game here. It's simply used for an illustration. But you can see the idea. We welcome our opponent's aggression. We might even tempt him into becoming aggressive. And we use the force and inertia of his attack against him to break his balance. If you want to look at the rest of this game, I, I sincerely encourage you to do so. It's a brilliancy. But the actual game I want to share with you is from another one of my chess heroes. National Master Rennie Phillips. So we'll check that out now. Okay, here's the game I want to share with you, my friends. It was played on the internet and it's a 15 minute rapid game. And with the white pieces is National Master Rennie Phillips. And with the black pieces is Grandmaster Gabriel Schwartzman, who at the time was the current US Open champion. It begins d4 and Grandmaster Schwartzman plays f5 going into the Dutch system. 
knight to f3, knight to f6. And what white will do is simply get a grip on the centre, particularly the e5 square. And he will go in for pawn storms on the king side or the queen side while maintaining adequate control of the centre. Black, on the other hand, gets a firm grip on the e4 square. And this is the hallmark London system, bishop to f4. And White's idea is simply to avoid peace exchanges. Control the centre, as we have said, and go in for pawn storms, either king side or queen side. d6 was played. Black signalling that he will contest control of the e5 square. And I love this move, e3. It's a very, it looks innocuous, but it's a very provocative move. Because what happens if black goes after this bishop? Let's see, he tries knight to h5. You get this series of events. Bishop to g5, h6, again going after the bishop. Bishop h4, g5. And then this amazing retreat move, knight to d2. The best move here for black is probably to play the knight to f6, but if he tries to take the bishop, his position falls apart. Something like this. So it's a very provocative and tempting move, this seemingly innocuous move. e3. Tempting black to come after white. In the actual game, of course, Grandmaster Schwartzman is far too experienced for something like that. And he plays e6. Trying to conceal his intentions for as long as possible. White continues with normal, slow development. His objective is simply to play sound chess and try to tempt his opponent into becoming aggressive so that he can unbalance him. And black plays knight to c6, building for an eventual attack against the e5 point. Master Phillips played c3. Probably the most aggressive move was c4, but it's probably the most anticipated move as well. Now why play a move that is anticipated if you can play something else? c3 is an unambitious move, but it's solid. And it fits in with our posture. We're simply saying to black, Okay, if you get aggressive, that's fine. We welcome the aggression. We will use that aggression to launch, to unbalance you and break your balance. Queen to e7. And bishop to c4. I really like this move because it anticipates an eventual e5. Where this bishop here will be blocked out of the game, but this bishop here will in fact have some influence and live. h6 which threatens of course g5 and something like bishop to g7. So h3 is called for to provide the bishop with an escape square. And if black castles kingside to eventually play something like g4, launching the pawn storm against the castle king. e5, the attack in the center has now begun. And Grandmaster Rennie Phillips, he comments here that so far my strategy is working. The Grandmaster is coming to get me. <laughs> of course, Bishop to h2 was played. It makes no sense to open up the game with a move like d takes on e5. g5. Black is getting very hostile and very aggressive. 
But ask yourself the questions, chess friends. Is this aggression warranted? Is Black's position aggressive or is it overextended? Is he unbalancing himself? Queen to e2 conceals White's intentions. Black has no idea whether White will castle kingside or queenside. e4, further aggression. And White simply welcomes the attack and welcomes the opportunity to reposition his knight by undeveloping it to g1. Now this, this knight here is actually quite useful here because it can help with attacking the head of the pawn chain with a move like f3. Bishop to e6. Black wants to exchange bishops. But White is not interested in peace exchanges and simply castles long. Castling away from the black aggression. Further aggression with d5. The bishop simply drops back to bishop to b3. The idea behind this move is simply to allow for the move c4. If you take a look at Black's pawns here, the base of the pawn chain here is on f5 and on d5. And White can simply attack them with the move c4 or with the move g4, attacking the base of Black's pawn chain. And of course this is made possibly because of Black's aggression. A5 gaining space on both sides of the board. The problem with this aggression is that it's essentially premature. The king has no safe place. Okay, the position looks closed in the centre, but it can open up at any time. Pinning the knight on c6. And the king self castles. Knight to b3. And the knight eyes the immediate square here on c5. But it will pounce onto the, the castle lawn, I suppose. Knight drops back, conceding temporarily the c5 square. Knight to c5. Now it's true that black can kick this knight, but he would only further make further concessions in his position by doing so with a move like I don't know b6. Instead, Grandmaster Schwarzman plays c6, keeping black, keeping white guessing. Bishop to e5. Beautiful bishop now. Radiating power throughout the chessboard. It now restricts the movements of this knight here because, well, it's pinned to the rook, of course. b6 instead of playing the immediate b5. Of course, if white retreats this knight to b3, well, traps the bishop here on a4. But the knight has done its job, has loosened up the black king side, queen side, sorry, and it simply exchanges itself. 18 moves into the game and this is the first piece exchanged. Queen takes on e6. And here, National Master Rennie Phillips begins his idea of attacking the base of the pawn chain. With the move, g4, utilising this pawn lever. The Black King is looking somewhat uncomfortable here, I would say. b5, 
an intermediate move, g takes f5. Queen must take, and bishop drops back, where it x-rays the queen here, from its position here on c2. b4, and c4. It'd be an absolute mistake here to take on b4, opening up files, opening up the rook file for this rook here, after c takes b and a takes b. So instead, National Master Phillips plays c4, attacking the base of the black pawn chain. Bishop to g7, 22 moves into the game, and this is the first time this bishop has actually moved. f3, again utilising the knight here on g1, using the pawn lever to attack, this time the head of the black pawn chain. Some panic in black's camp, and the monarch seeks shelter away from this file here, which is about to open up the f file. Rook to f1, x-raying the queen here. Queen moves away from the aggression. And yeah, f takes e4, opening up files and lines against the king. Knight takes e4 was played. Knight to f3. Rook tries to come into the game. Trying to organise and participate in the battle, but it's a little too little and too late. Bishop takes g7. Removing the defenders of the king. King takes g7. And now the knight utilises this beautiful outpost here on e5. Here black plays rook to f6. It would be much better for him to try something like perhaps rook takes on f1. You may be asking yourself the question, why not? knight to g3 because you can see that the constellation here it looks favourable well get this attacking variation here queen to d3 threatening of course the queen coming here fruit takes 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 well it's roasty toasty because black is forced to give up the queen So we don't get this variation. Instead, Grandmaster Schwartzman played Rook to F6, trying to shore up the position of the king. Bishop takes, D takes, again removing defenders of the king. Queen takes. And the rook is able to come into the game with tempo. In chess, a tempo is a move that gains time. As a piece can be developed and attack or defend simultaneously, forcing the opponent to respond to it with no chance of developing a piece of their own. And the net game for the possessor of the tempo is a free move. And you can see that this happens here. Queen to e6 and rook to h7. Now this gives, of course, black the opportunity to, to exchange knight and rook for queen. For example, if queen takes, knight takes, king takes. But this is no good for black because, well, the queen can enter the position here or here. And these pieces are far too far away of the king to be of any use, and the queen will simply eat up all of these pawns. 
probably. So instead of that, well, king to g8 was played. Queen to f2. And here, well, Grandmaster Schwarzman commits a mistake. He takes on h3. This king is absolutely naked. And look at this. Rook to g7. Of course the rook cannot be taken. King takes on g7. Well, it's roasty toasty for the black king. So instead of that, king to h8 was played. But again, we have the rook sacrifice. Rook to h7 check. And now the king is essentially forced to take. But again, we have this pattern. And knight g6 checkmate. Very, very beautiful and interesting conceptual game played here by National Master Rennie Phillips. He welcomed Black's aggression. And he used that aggression to unbalance his opponent. We eventually saw how, because of the extended nature of Black's position, National Master Rennie Phillips was able to utilise pawn levers Attacking the base of Black's extended pawn chain. First of all with the move c4, and then with well first of all with the move g4. Yeah, this move here, g4, attacking the base of the pawn chain and opening up lines against the black king. And this this one here is c4. Attacking the base of the pawn chain. So I hope you found that interesting. It's a very, very interesting conceptual idea of welcoming the aggression of our opponent because normally our natural instinct is to meet aggression with more aggression. But if we apply this idea of and trying to destroy our opponent's balance by welcoming the aggression and then using the force or inertia of their attack against them, then the likelihood is, is that we can unbalance our opponent. And an opponent that is unbalanced is much, much easier to knock over than someone that is sitting solidly. So I hope you enjoyed that. My chess friends, I certainly enjoyed relating this idea and these games to you. And my hope is that you can apply them in your own games. So once again, I thank you very, very much for taking the time to watch this chess video. And I sincerely wish you well with your own chess. Take care and goodbye. <laughs>